Okay, it's book club. The Authenticity Project with by Claire Pooley. We discuss. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Uh, it was a, it was a good summer read, and uh, we have a lot to say about it and lots of other things. So thanks for coming back. The new book club book for August is called The Push. So um, join us for that. It'll be sometime in August. And I hope you enjoy this podcast episode with Kathy and Kirsten about the Authenticity Project. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, Okay. Max yeah. woke up. So Max has this, yeah, he wakes up and like one thyroid gland is swollen. Don't you know have why two thyroids? I don't know if it's your thyroid pituitary. It's one of the glands on the side of your thyroid. Thyroid, it's the two sides. So yeah. It's like oh, a butterfly. Right? Oh. But only one is swollen. It's really painful to touch, but like he can swallow. It's fine. Um, but he wakes up at noon. I'm like the day's half over at this point. So... But like, it's just, it's weird. Why is one of them swollen? What's happened? What have you been exposed to? What the hell is going on, right? Long story short, we end up going in to see Stephen's doctor um, who gets us in last minute and thinks, well, it's some sort of infection. So I'll put you on an antibiotic. Fine. He takes one that night, but it's just getting bigger and bigger. Like by the time he goes to bed, it's <gasps> like this golf ball site. Like it's enormous. Oh my God. So of course I'm freaking out yeah. because I'm like, I, like I need to check on him every hour because God only knows what is going to happen. Totally. Like I'm just terrified. So every night, so every hour in the middle of the night, my alarm is going off. I'm like, here we are 17 years old. And I feel like yeah, was, we have terrifying. an infant. I was terrified. Yeah. I'm like, I don't anyway. Uh, so the next day it's still just as swollen. It hadn't gone down from that golf ball size, even though he took meds the next day, he was really painful. We finally go see an ENT who gets us in later that day. And he had, apparently he was dehydrated. And what happened was bacteria that builds up in your glands because he was dehydrated, it caused it to build up and cause some sort of infection, wow. but only on one side. And I was like, this is from you not drinking enough water? What? Are you kidding me? Never heard of um, such a thing. Isn't that the most bizarre thing? Yeah. It was crazy. And- and thank course God. of five days of antibiotics, he's totally fine. And the fact that I wake up as the house, I'm like, did you drink water? Did you drink water? Did you drink water? He's like, you have to shut up. I was like, I can't. Does Isla know this story? Please pass it on. I her. have not told her. No, I don't think so. That girl doesn't enjoy water. Oh, yeah. So she avoids. Well, she'll he, do another thing. Once he figured out he was dehydrated, he's like, um, I think we need some Gatorade. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Okay. That's what you need. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm like, if that's what it takes. Was. I'll buy you uh, Gatorade, but that's really not. I mean, not. who knew though? Who knew like, that was even possible? Never heard of that. No. And of course, like when you Google it, <laughs> first of all, it's like meningitis or oh, like, God. or like um, mono was one of the other ones. I was like, okay, I could possibly deal with mono because all of these other things, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I can't have that. I can't have that. He's like, cause I don't know, one side of your body, usually it's your body just reacts differently, but- how crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, I'm glad it's that simple. That was It was super simple. simple. Easy to fix. Yes. Easy to maybe 24 manage. hours of not sleep for me, but it was fine. Yeah, yeah, right? So. Oh my God, how scary. Yeah. These kids, man. They'll be the death of us. The freaking A, man. I swear. The death of us. Yeah. The ortho, the doctors. <laughs> George is getting her senior portraits on Friday. How <gasps> terrifying. Isn't that crazy? Is that? Yeah. Senior portrait. When I got that email... I started crying. I know I got I it. I was not prepared. <laughs> I was like, first of all, it comes like three days after school ends. Yes. I was like, I've barely processed the fact that he's a senior. Can yeah. we like, hold on just a minute. And now you want his like cap and gown picture? Like what? Yeah. Wow. So, it's pretty freaky. It is very freaky. It's really freaky. Yeah. I was really kind of freaked out too. Yeah. I got it same two, three days after school. And what they give you like an appointment scheduler. Mm -hmm. And the only appointments were available were the exact time that we were out of town. And I, of course, panic. And I'm like, my daughter's not going to have to take your portrait because we're traveling. What do I do? And I had to, you know, get somebody on the phone. They're like, oh, no, appointments come up as the year moves on. And I'm like, you should maybe think of having yeah. more than a two week window available at a time. I mean, come on. Oh, People have their summer planned and then you can't figure it out. I mean, I was like, luckily, all our traveling will be done. And if you say there's more appointments coming up. Phew. 
but oh they told us we just had to go online and schedule it and we had to have it if you don't have it by september 1st then you're not in the yearbook they didn't tell us that in the email Oh, they told, they me, told that. me that when I called, oh. but in the email, they were like, here's the appointment schedule, schedule an appointment. And I was like, oh my God, only the first two <laughs> weeks of June. I mean, the first like four appointments, they were still in school and I hadn't even received the email. And I was like, how could I have known? Oh, that's I crazy. should have known. No, <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. I think my senior portrait was during the school year. Like after we had to do our start on our own. Oh, no, mine was at school. Mine was not at school. Mine was at school. We had to go to a private place. We had to, if we wanted to, we had to go to a private place. Well, well, that's what we're doing for Georgia. That's what we're doing too, yeah. It's so freaky. Now, you know, she she, uh, drove herself to Rite Aid in this pandemic recently and bought red hair dye, went in her bathroom, dyed her hair red, uh, had no idea, and came out of the bathroom and was like, ta-da! And now she has about three and a half inches of root of red <laughs> and the mousy blonde root. And so I'm sending her to my hair guy tomorrow to get something done. I was like, what are you going to do with your hair? And she was like, I don't know. You know, <laughs> high school lets you have natural hair color, even if it's extreme. So I'm thinking I'm going to go back red. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it's your senior portrait. I said, don't you think you want to look like natural and she went i don't really care i don't see the point I'm like shit and then i i bought you can buy one pose two poses yeah. or three poses right the one is the the drape right yep everybody gets the drape but i bought two because i was like she's never gonna go for three but i'd like one of her like we're there you got your hair and makeup done she's so mad she does not want to do that She's like, I don't even see the point of the stupid drape. I'm like, because everybody has a senior portrait in the United States of America. Yes. Everybody. It's part of tradition. You have to do it. Yeah. So I called her and I was like, we need to figure out an outfit for the second photo. She was like, no, I'll just throw something on from my closet. And I'm going, I'm <laughs> trying so hard. You know, I'm not the mom that makes sure my kids look perfect when they leave. That is not, you see all of them on Instagram. They definitely do not look like ship shape all the time ever maybe maybe not ever (laughs) but i'm like there are some times when you need to kind of because you're going to look back on it and go what was i thinking i look like uh i look like a like a garbage collector we have that conversation all the time i'm like listen the requirements are very minimal and they're very few throughout the year but there are certain days in which you just have to wear a button-down shirt period end of story and for this, you also have to wear a tie. <laughs> <laughs> for this, you also have to wear a tie. FYI. <laughs> tie. <laughs> and actually, that's not my requirement, by the way. So, like school's requirement. Yeah. They have to wear like a suit. They either have to wear a tux, which is provided, or like a suit, jacket, and tie. And then his second is like a cap and gown picture because he wouldn't oh. go for anything more. I wonder if she can do a cap and gown picture. I bet she can. I bet they have it at the studio. That would be good. Because they'll provide it at the studio for us, our colors. I'll just do that. I mean, I'd love and then, to have yeah, Then she did wear whatever underneath. But then and does then, she need her thing if she has like a drape or anything? You know, I don't think you get that for that uh, because that's more individual. I think you just get the plain cap and gown. So being a Girl Scout troop leader, you know that you can buy Girl Scout cords for them to wear when they graduate. It's, nope. It's a green and that. white cord that they can put, you know, because for each like honor society or uh-huh. yeah. anything kind of distinct that you do you get a cord yeah and uh, i was going to buy the four graduating girl scouts a cord for their graduation i wonder if i should buy them now so they can take a picture in the cord if they choose to i don't know i was going to give it to them like you know when it was about time to graduate yeah um what's wrong halston halston's moving around um (laughs) anyway i can't believe i have four graduating girl scouts yeah. How crazy is that? That is crazy. It's They're nuts. super excited to camp in teepees, too. Are they? Yes. <laughs> they oh, are. Nice. I thought they'd be like, meh. But they are. So that's kind of cool. That is put the cool. deposit down. We're all set. Sweet. We have five teepees. Thank God. Thank God is right. I had this whole moment. I was like, wait a minute. Are we going to be able to? I know they just changed all the rules again. But for a heartbeat, I was like, oh, my God. Are they going to be allowed to sleep in the same place? Like, what the hell are the rules these days? Mm. So I hope it stays. Good question. Yeah. I hope it stays too. 
Or maybe we'll just forget I even mentioned that. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't even know. Are you talking about Girl right, Scouts? Exactly. Are you about? Never mind. Halston, just erase that. Never it's mind. Fine. We have no qualms. I don't whatsoever. know nothing about nothing. <laughs> exactly. I know nothing about nothing regarding that. I was thinking about, let me ask you this. I was thinking about giving, I'm going to give the, the ambassadors who are graduating a rope. And I was thinking about giving them each, <laughs> don't laugh at me, a uh, <laughs> A knife, like a, oh. a buck knife, yeah. like engraved with their name on it, like from the troop as like, congratulations. It's a great idea. Yeah. You like that idea? Okay. I do. Yeah. You know, I never know how people feel about <laughs> knives and guns well, and stuff. I, mean, I never yeah. know. I think a gun would be a different story. Like, <laughs> well, because I don't know. If we were in the South, it'd be perfectly appropriate. Because right, right. don't you get one so when like, you turn sixteen so use an or eight, eight, eight or eight or or eight. I got my first gun at eight. Okay, never but, mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you mean because knife? What were you saying? Well, it's just related to Girl Scouts and it's camping. Relevant. Like, they'll yeah. use it. It's really functional when they're camping. Not yeah. necessarily so much a gun. But. No, <laughs> maybe not a gun. We haven't really used much of those camping. <laughs> Not yet. Thank God we haven't needed Not to. Not yet. Not yet. What kind of is trip there are a you gun planning? badge? Maybe there is. I could teach gun safety. Not really, but I could sort of halfway. Well, there's plenty of places we could take them to. Yes, that's true. I'm going to teach them. I, I'm not sure our parents would go for that. But they think? might be okay. I did think, I would imagine. wonder if anybody, any of the parents would be like, you gave my daughter a knife? You know, I just don't ever know anybody. Th- I've had a knife yeah. forever. I have a knife in my purse. I carry a buck knife in my purse all the time. I took it with me on this trip I went. And my daddy said, how do you get that on the plane? I was like, I just put it in my luggage, my checked luggage. And when I get out, I put it back in my purse. Yeah. Because... I kind of don't function with, with, without a knife. I always have a knife. So, but I wonder if if some of these, you know, LA moms would be like, I cannot believe that Leanne gave my daughter a knife. <laughs> What's she going to do with a knife? I don't think so. We have cool moms. Okay. In our troop. I'm not giving them a uh, benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get them some knives. Just put the Girl Scout emblem on it and it'll be fine. Uh, they, you know, they don't sell Girl Scout knives, I don't think. I don't think. I have, well, no, I have like a pocket knife that's Girl Scouts from like a hundred years ago. Oh, from a long time ago. Yeah. Not I don't know if they sell them anymore, though. I don't know if they do either. Oh, well, I'll be looking into it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see what you thought before I started doing it, just handing out knives. Here. <laughs> <laughs> handing out knives, everybody. <laughs> um, should we talk about this book? Sure. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> so to remind okay, that's everybody, why we're here. <laughs> it's the Authenticity Project. And this is a book that George's AP teacher recommended that she read over the summer. I could have skipped recommended it. Recommended or required? Recommended. I could have skipped it. Same. Could have skipped it? I liked it. You did? I did. Of course you did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so tell me what you like. So it's so funny, though, because I actually did not think even though it says a novel right on the front cover, I really thought this was more of a self-help book. Oh. Um, and I was like, fuck, I don't want to read a thought. I just put this <laughs> off for so long. I started reading it like a minute and a half ago. Yeah, right. Oh, maybe, likewise, I finished maybe four the, days ago because I, I was like, I had today. zero oh. interest. And I was like, oh, this actually isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I anticipated something very different. So, well, I think I get there. I, I totally understand. There's a lot not great about this book, but in terms of like super quick, easy summer read, I thought it was fine. I, I thought think it was there good. is something to be said for expectations, though. I yes. agree. So if you have low expectations about something and yeah, I did not have Kathy's reaction to this book. <laughs> Nor I. I That's would funny. not have completed it if not for the commitment to this uh, book Same. Club. <laughs> really? Oh, that's yeah. funny. Same, oh, I didn't same. think it was that bad. I thought it's it, not necessarily a matter of being bad. No, it, I don't think it's bad. Mm-hmm. It's just not what I would normally like to read. Well, that's not what, what I thought. I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was sophomoric. I thought it was very easy. Yeah. Um, all the everything that happened was too easy. I didn't have any like, oh, my God, seriously. I had no like, wow, that's amazing. I had no reaction to that. And I don't, I, first of all, before we start 
dish, dishing on Claire Pooley. I looked up Claire, who is the author, and she is someone who has persevered over a lot of life struggles. Mm-hmm. And I applaud her for that. And I applaud anybody who gets a novel published. That's amazing. Not everybody likes every novel. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I didn't like her novel, but I think that her accomplishment is significant. And a lot of it is based on her life experiences that she's completely fictionalized. Um, yeah, so- it was interesting that she said that um, basically each of the characters mm-hmm. is her, is an aspect and, yeah. of her. Mm-hmm. Um, Except so- for the one character who is completely undeveloped. Yeah, and he, exactly. He was completely, yes. and it was like, like, you can tell he's attractive that- and he's the nicest person in the world. Right. Yeah. Okay. And there's <laughs> zero depth to him whatsoever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're talking about Riley? Yeah. 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 Well, um, I kept, I kept, I said this to Georgia. I kept, I kept slamming the book around. I'd read it for a little while and then slam it and go, ah, I have so many other things I should be reading. Ah, I don't want to read this. This is a summer read, but it's like a big summer read. I don't want to read this read. It's, I don't want this book. And I kept, but I did it because we committed to finishing it. And Georgia finally stopped and went, but what's bothering you? And I said, I'll tell you what's bothering me. Wait, did she read it? No, she hasn't read it yet. Mm-hmm. So she probably won't read it now because right. I've stomped and pissed and <laughs> threw things. But I said, what's bothering me is she's telling me what she's telling me. Like she's mm-hmm. saying what uh, she's saying what's happening and then having the character say what she just said. And I don't like that. Yes. Show, mm-hmm. don't tell. <laughs> exactly. She told everything and laid it. So that's why I said it was sophomoric because I think that's a sophomoric writer who who feels they need to spoon feed you what's happening instead of setting up a circumstance or a dialogue where you get to figure out what's happening mm-hmm. or it's obvious by what's happening, what's happening yeah. instead of I, I'm pouring a glass of wine. She pours a glass of wine. I was like, motherfucker, just pour the glass of wine. I see it. Yeah, it was very heavy handed. The influencer who's on Instagram all the time and social Uh media is bad. And then the other guy gets on social media and that's terrible. And it's like, then they just turn into shells of themselves because they're using social media. In a page and a half. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And I was kind of like, well, there's no, there's just no nuance to anything. Right. It's like, they they just seemed like, honestly, I felt like all of the characters seemed kind of undeveloped. And mm-hmm. a lot of the development was how attractive <laughs> some of them were, or most of them. Yeah. So I kept thinking like, oh, this is a very visual um, book. I think it'll be a really cute um, romantic comedy. Right. With the quirky characters. And you can sort of imagine the different, like, beautiful people playing all these beautiful, quirky characters <laughs> who all come into one another's lives. But there was also, it. I think it was very, um, it was just weird that every single person seemed to have no other friends <laughs> in their right. lives at all. So they were all very that. available yeah. to just drop everything and become this instant circle mm-hmm. with one another. And I was like, I was reading this thinking like, sure, that would be fun if I met someone like that, but I'd still have my friends and my family (laughs) and all my other responsibilities. Like suddenly people are like dropping things and volunteering full time at a shelter. And it was, it was very unbelievable. Like most of it actually, like just the connections, even like the dude in Thailand or whatever island he was on, like all of a sudden he decides he's going to play matchmaker. You're like, but that's so out of character. Yeah, totally. It didn't character, yeah. actually make sense, but mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I was, I was, um, I did, I, I can't say I didn't. En- well, I guess I can say I didn't enjoy the book. I didn't really enjoy the book. I was resentful I, of the book because I kept going. I could be reading. I actually. This is part of the problem. At the same time, I was reading Far From the Matting Crowd, which is delicious and amazing. And then I had to go, oh, I got to go read this book. <laughs> and Julian, the character, the older gentleman yeah. with the fashionista, he he spoke in a way that maybe people speak like that in England. But I don't know anybody that speaks the way he speaks. It's very kind of posh and very kind of um, not... I just didn't believe the way she, his dialogue. Okay. Really I did spoke. not have a problem with Julian, but I'll tell yeah. you why. Why? It's because I, I looked up, 
I was getting bored with the book. And so <laughs> I looked up the book thinking, well, at least I can bring to the table like some questions, some book club questions. Uh-huh. So I just Googled. And the first thing that I read about it was that sh- the author wrote this with the actor Bill Nye. Oh, I love in, him. I yeah. love him. And so I saw that immediately and was like, oh, OK, so I just saw Bill uh, Nye saying all these lines. And like, Darling, oh, you know, yeah, just the yeah. way he is. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah, I like him. That works. Uh, yeah. So you like Julia. Yeah. And also made me, that's also what made me think this is, this could be a cute movie. It could be know, a cute movie. Right I could actors. see that. Mm. I would never watch this movie. If they, oh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> but like a good airplane movie or like a good, you know, that kind of thing. A yeah. summer read movie. Flight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what yeah. else did you like about it, Kathy? I don't know, it was fine. Like I wasn't bothered by it. It was not a great story. Like there was nothing that was so amazing about it, but I w- it didn't bother me. It was super quick and easy. Like it didn't require a lot of brain power to read it. True. You know, she's a good writer in that she's easy to read. Yeah. Like, you know, some people, uh, I get bogged down in the way they structure their sentences or the rhythm yeah. of their storytelling. And it makes a, a, a read very slow, even if the story is good. Um, I didn't have that. It was effortless to read. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Effortless um, to read and pleasant yeah. to read. It was a Just happy. Right. Yeah, yeah, happy. Yeah, it was no, no super negativity. No, nothing. And crazy. I wasn't like throwing the book across the room, like frustrated with the the sort of inconsistencies or the the crazy coincidences. I kind of accepted, oh, okay, this is the kind of book where there's going right. to be some crazy coincidences and everything. Right, the, sort of the only way for this story to work is that you have to like, you know, suspension of disbelief. Like yeah. you have to assume yeah. that all of this is going to like work out come full circle yeah. mm-hmm. and they're all going to whatever, you know, like you have to know that going in. Mm-hmm. But well, it's so funny you said that about a romantic comedy because I thought as what I used to write for years. And as soon as uh, Monica bumped into of Hazard, course, that was I went, their meet okay, cute. <laughs> yeah, they're ending up together in the end. Right. Yeah. They're going to hate each that, other and end up together. Even yeah. though you knew that going into it, okay, she's going to end up with this guy at the end because they hate each other mm-hmm. to start. You knew that was going to happen. I was not satisfied by that, by how they got together. I kind of felt like mm-hmm. it was sort of forced. And she had just had a realization when she broke up with Riley that, you know what? I'm a feminist. I don't really need to be with a guy yeah. to be happy. And then the second later, <laughs> she's kissing Hazard and going, yeah, maybe I could see myself with him. And I was like, what? Like <laughs> Feminism out the window. Like, not that she can't have a boyfriend and be a feminist, but just in the way that she had set yeah. up. Um feeling like a feminist. I don't know. Uh, and why was Riley so bad for her? Why, why was he, he bad so bad for anyone? I mean, he, he was yeah. adorable. Yeah. And simple as like a simple guy, not, not, not simple in a bad way. Just like straight shooter. What you see is what you get. No, no, no complications, no drama. Uh, yeah. I didn't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I kept going. I could be reading Thomas Hardy. I probably shouldn't have done that at the same time. If I was just reading this book, I think I would have felt a little better. I think you're right about the expectation thing. If you, especially yeah. since I was super excited that the English, the AP English teacher recommended, it. I was like, it's got to be a great book. And I wonder why she recommended it. Is she yeah, like 25 years old or like, is she young? I mean, I think she's younger. I don't think she's 25. She may be like 30, 32, something like that, but I don't know for sure. And, um, Because the thing is, we all know how a book can just hit you when you're at a certain stage Mm -hmm. in life. And so it may she may just be at a stage in life where she's like, yeah, I want to be more authentic. I want, you know, just feeling the things, feeling the themes um, in it. My feel my problem with the the whole authenticity, it's like I was like, well, is authenticity really vomiting all of your secrets out into well, the public domain. None of them were authentic. No. Even after vomiting all their secrets, like they, it was a very tiny piece of who they actually were. Yes. Julian started the whole thing on a lie. The whole book yeah. was a lie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I found that really interesting that it was not even remotely authentic. None of the characters really no. were. They had no idea who they were, yeah. any of them. I guess maybe that was the point. Maybe that they didn't know who they were. There's some questions in the back of the book. Let's mm-hmm. take a look. Did you guys look through them? I the did. questions, no. I looked at her interview. Questions and topics for discussion. <laughs> Julian writes, everyone lies about their lives. Is this true? 
And do you lie about your life? Here's where we get good. <laughs> Everyone lies. Is this true? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think uh, people lie to themselves all the time, um, myself included. And uh, and yeah, sometimes I think everybody lies uh, to, to some extent. What do you think, Kirsten? Yeah, I agree with all of that. We lie to ourselves. Um, we lie to other people. And sometimes it's not even... Um, I mean, it's, a lot of the time it's not a malicious lie. It's like, you know, that idea of being authentic and like yeah. letting everyone know that you're struggling or that the specific struggles, it's not. It's more it's, of a lie of omission, I think. Not necessarily yeah. a lie, but it's not well, necessarily super authentic either at certain moments. But also it's like you need to, I need to preserve my own dignity by by being safe, like by, by being only completely authentic with people that I feel safe around. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we had the conversation last time about how some people at our former school, mm -hmm. it, it, some situations felt terribly just not safe. Like, mm -hmm. um, meaning like, you know, Oh, gate. Oh, you're not, your child isn't gate. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And um, I didn't feel safe around those people. I didn't feel like my child was safe around those kind of people by vomiting out information about her learning disability, for example, or mm -hmm. whatever. I just, I felt like, okay, so maybe, so it could be considered inauthentic that I didn't tell everybody, by the way, yeah, right. <laughs> this is what our family has on, going right. on. Um, but I think that it was the better choice for me to not feel, um, vulnerable around people who were not safe mm. um, people. I don't know. Interesting. Mm. Uh, huh. Okay, number two. <laughs> Julian calls his notebook the Authenticity Project. Do you think people are increasingly searching for authenticity in today's world? If so, why? Do you think people are, are what did she say? Are increasingly searching for authenticity i don't know uh, i think sure but I don't know, it depends on who you are like, i think it depends on who you are and i think it i think reality tv screwed people up with authenticity to be honest with you i think they look at what they see on tv and think that's authentic and that behavior is not really healthy a lot of the time not all of it obviously some Reality right. TV and they think great, that but... they conflate um, authentic with unscripted when you're like, well, yeah. unscripted does not mean that somebody isn't, you know, magnifying situations or behaviors or whatever, playing to the camera or body parts. Um, when, isn't know. that like part of the problem with Instagram? Right. None mm -hmm. of it's authentic. Like it's very cultivated. Mine's authentic. <laughs> okay. Maybe not all of them. I don't them, know though. But I'm just saying, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like that I was... Know. There's what a swing mean? away from that very um, manicured feed or yes, whatever right, right. Yes. to being more authentic. But yes. I so feel I guess like in that sense, the answer would be yes. Maybe. Yeah, there yeah. are some people, but, though, who have like they're like they almost have a brand in authenticity. Like, look, my kids just threw up all over the place. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of like, mm -hmm. um, you know, look at how messy my life is. Mm -hmm. Look, let me throw out, let me vomit out all of my, everything that I'm going through. There's like a lot of oversharing that happens on social media that I think is in the name of authenticity, but I'm like, but is it, is it authentic when you're vomiting out to the masses? Might it, I don't know. I just, I just question when anything is done for in front of a camera, if it like, can it even be authentic? Like, even if it yeah. is like sharing the warts and all. I don't know. It's for a reason. It's for well, a different purpose than, right. Than being authentic. It's for, right. it's for, right. um, likes and that's not super yeah. authentic. Um, but you know, what bothers me on Instagram and that same vein is when, um, people are caught doing something just like out of the blue, amazing, but someone else is filming it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that work out for you? Really? Yeah. Yeah, there, there, that wasn't like, it wasn't spur of the moment. Someone else is filming it. Did yeah. you knew that was happening? I don't like that. That turns me off so much. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so, there's a lot of that with a lot of celebrities. 
that I just am like, okay, I don't like you anymore. That's not cool. I, I feel gross now. I feel like you just used me somehow. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> We are all connected via huge social media communities, but increased online interaction often comes at the expense of of the type of local real life community provided by Monica's Cafe. What do these communities give us that virtual ones do not? Coffee. I can't get coffee from Instagram, <laughs> right? <laughs> snacks. Can't get snacks from Instagram. What does a real community offer that Instagram doesn't? Real people. Real connection. Yeah, oh, like, live in-person connection. Yeah, yeah, like even if you respond to somebody on Instagram or social media, like it's not the same as having a conversation with somebody. Right. Like there's that, even through texting, it's not the same. No. Right? Like yeah. the emotion, the like the nuance of the conversation or what you're trying to convey is not the same. Yeah, yeah. even FaceTiming and Zooming is not the same. Correct, I, yeah. I and that's a, even a lot more connected than social media, that's for sure. Totally, but- so, you know, the the three classes that I took this past year have all been on Zoom, my writing classes. And I'm told that's the only Zoom that I'm fine with at this point, because it's the only class or the only type of class that I started while in mm-hmm. lockdown. So it's the only way that I've had class. So mm-hmm. it feels organic and right. normal to me, as opposed to like I did Pilates classes on Zoom for a while. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I just don't like this on Zoom. It's no. ju- I'm just done with Zoom. Um, but I, I met um, a woman who's been in all three of my classes. Mm. She lives in Colorado and she was visiting LA and I met her and she came and hung out in my backyard with me. And it was so funny because I kept saying to her, it was like, you look the same, but not the same. Huh. And like, there's nothing quantifiable that I, that it was like, oh, you're, ha- you're, nose is a different shape in real life or like it was nothing Uh like that it was just like oh you're three-dimensional yeah (laughs) that's crazy (laughs) I've only ever seen you as a two-dimensional person and I thought that I had some sense of everything and I kept like just inspecting her and going like (laughs) oh wow here you are (laughs) that's crazy how funny yeah that's so cool that happened yeah really cool yeah it was it was really nice did she come just to see you no, she uh, she was on a trip out here, and but yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Nice. It's a neat experience. So definitely yeah. in person cafe for her, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Most of the characters in the book are lonely, but in very different ways. What are the various forms of loneliness explored in the Authenticity Project? Um, Wait, I'm oh sorry, God, are we? I lost the end of that say? sentence. What did you say? What are the various forms of loneliness? Oh, I don't even know. It what does that feel means. like school? Yeah. yeah. We can skip it. The story is told from the perspective of six main characters. Who did you relate to the most and why? And which character is least like you? I mean, everyone likes Riley because he was a nice guy and he was, you know, creating no drama. Mm -hmm. Um, And I liked Bill Nye because he was played by (laughs) Bill Nye. (laughs) In your brain. (laughs) I mean, who can't like that? (laughs) He's pretty awesome. (sighs) I don't know that I related to anyone in that book, though. I related a little bit to Monica, actually, because sometimes I get f- more focused on the task than what's really important. Mm. You know, I do that yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, not that I related to her need to have a baby or her like extreme rigidity. I mean, I'm, I have rigidity in places, too. But what I related to was sometimes she'd lose sight of the forest for the trees. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I do that for sure. Um, if I had to pick someone I related to, um, I definitely did not relate to Julian at all. Yeah. Um, I, not at all. Yeah. Likewise. I was joking about. No. Bill <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> anybody, Kathy, you don't relate to anybody? Not, I mean, I, not really. None of them are super likable, quite frankly. No. We all make snap judgments about e- each other and they are often they are wrong. What incorrect assumptions Do the authenticity project characters make about each other and what are the consequences? I think you should read the book to figure that out. Yeah. Um, There's a scene in the book where Monica and Alice first see each other through the cafe window and both want what the other has. What does the authenticity project teach us about envy? So I think that scene was actually maybe one of my favorites. um, Because so it's like one character 
walks by, looks in the window, sees another, projects like, wow, what a great, what a romantic, amazing life she has, blah, blah, blah. And vice versa. And they do that to one another. And the opposite thing is happening. And I thought that was one of the more nuanced things about the book that it was like, oh, I mean, she does kind of hit you over the head with it, but, Mm -hmm. but just to show that two things also two things were happening at the same time. Like, yeah, that was kind of a romantic moment, but Monica really wanted what the woman looking in the window had. Um, Yeah. But I don't know about the treaties about all of it. (laughs) (laughs) What does it teach us about envy? I didn't really learn anything about envy from this book, but there definitely was envy um, between those two characters. Um, And I think with Riley and Hazard a little bit too. Um, And, but I didn't learn anything from this book about envy. So I can't really answer that question. What about you, Kathy? No, it's the same. I mean, it's kind of what you already know. You don't really learn anything from it, but it hits you over the head. (laughs) Um, If you found the authenticity project, what truth would you tell? None. I would never write in that book ever. You would never write in that book ever? Nope. Why not? No way. Why not? I would never, I don't put myself out there ever. Like I would never do it in some <laughs> random book. Especially on this podcast with, you know, a few thousand people. <laughs> Whatever, Definitely Liam, don't. We don't talk Damn about it. that. I'm in this room. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I would never. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever do that. No, I wouldn't either. Me neither. No, yeah. would never. So say you had to. Let's just explore <laughs> that you had to. Is there anything you would write about if you you had to? You were going to develop a fatal form of thyroid cancer <laughs> or dehydration. If you don't write something in this book, what would you write? Because I have no idea. I have to think. I think Wait. I can tell you that I'm, I'm writing a memoir right now. So that's I would oh. write about those themes, about the isolation of um, going through rare <laughs> medical stuff. Um medical diagnoses, the search for medical diagnoses, how isolating it all is, how isolating it is to be focused on constantly forced to be working on remediation for your kids instead of enrichment like everybody else gets Mm. to do. I've had a lot of envy over the years of like, wow, they have it so easy. They get to just go and do Mm. like lessons and, (laughs) you know, normal kid things. And we're at doctor's appointments and, you know, doing labs and tests at a hospital. And, um, that's what I would write about. That's what I am writing about. So that's what I would write about, but I also would not write in that book, <laughs> <laughs> but I forced you to. So and you're forced to, you'd yeah. write, you'd just copy and paste. You've already written yeah, right? Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. It would be really long. <laughs> <laughs> you'd fill up the rest yeah. of the book. <laughs> yes. Gosh, what would I write about? I don't know. What would you write about? What Kathy? would you write about? Let's see. Now, what well, we, what was the question in the authenticity? Like, there was a very specific question well, that you it. had to answer. You're right. right? Yes. It's so at the very beginning. What was that? I forget. <laughs> they uh, only say it like nine times in the book, too. Uh, yeah, once or twice. Yeah. Um, I have to find, I think, where she finds the book. And it says, mm, dang it, pause. Hold on one minute. <laughs> How well do you know the people who live near you? How well do they know you? Mm-hmm. That's all that's in this book. What would happen that's if you shared sentence. the truth instead? Wait, everyone lies about their lives. What would happen if you shared the truth instead? The one thing that defines you that makes everything else about you fall into place. I'm pretty much an open book. Like, I don't have any kind of secrets. I mean, I lost half my family because I'm too much of an open book. I don't have, I don't know what I'd write about in that book. Um, I mean, I could write about something that, uh, the one thing that, I mean, do you write about something you feel guilt or shame about, I guess? Uh, I always felt very guilty that my older child had to take a back seat to my younger one because my younger had issues and needed more of me and there's only one of me and if i had to choose between reading a book to georgia or preventing isla from jumping off the second floor loft 
I had to choose preventing Isla from jumping off the second floor loft. And I feel very guilty to this day about that. So I'd probably write about that. And I've talked to George about it a million times and I've apologized to her and explained it to her, but it's something I feel like I, I somehow could have done better or, but I don't know how I could have done better. I just did the best I could in the moment, but that is something that bothers me even to this day, even though I I can't do anything to fix it. So maybe I'd think about that. Same. Right that. It's really hard when you have a kid. I mean, when Isla was a little kid, she didn't have any medical issues. She was just a lunatic and she <laughs> wasn't good at processing speech. And I didn't know that, but I knew that I couldn't say to her, this is unsafe and her go, oh, which I could do to Georgia. I could say this is unsafe and Georgia go, got it. I'm not doing that again. I'd say it to Isla and I think she heard blah, 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 blah until she was a bit older. It just took her a lot longer to process language. Uh, Now looking back, I think knowing that she has a sensory processing stuff, well, that makes sense to me that I would say stuff to her and it literally, it wasn't even defiance. I knew it wasn't defiance at the time, but I was like, how do I get this person to understand that you do not take a chicken neck out of the garbage and eat it? (laughs) That you're going to die if you do that. How do I get her to understand you do not shinny up a pole with your toes at nine months old. You can't do that. You know, that. so I felt like the first probably solid two and a half years of Isla's life, Georgia just was sat on the back burner. And she'd had me all to herself until yeah. then. And I had no way of managing it. I couldn't get Isla to do she just was non-cooperative, non-compliant. <laughs> you know, I had this little, because I was by myself all the time, Bert was always gone, and I had no nanny. The only time I had a nanny is when I was physically at work. Uh, so I had no no feeling. And Bert's sister would come sometimes and was very helpful. But I had this corral, right, that I kept in my living room. And when Georgia was a kid, I'd put her in the corral, I'd put baby Einstein on, and I could cook dinner. Uh-uh. Isla figured out how to climb that thing literally at like seven months old. I mean, I had no time to, to, to kind of like transition these two kids. Isla showed up and, you know, when you have an infant, it has to be all about yeah. the infant. And then when she got to that larger infant, she's just in motion. Um, I mean, she's walked at nine months. That's insane. It's crazy. And climbing at 10 months old, climbing shit. I mean, she was pulling herself up at seven months where I couldn't leave her there. She's going to hurt herself. And I couldn't strap her into anything, couldn't strap her in a high chair, (laughs) couldn't strap her in a swing. She wouldn't read a book. She wouldn't watch a video. She just was in motion constantly. And poor Georgia, I'd be like, here's a book. I'll be right back. (laughs) Want another book? I'll be right back. (laughs) That's all I could do. (laughs) Anyway, long-winded. That's probably what I would write about in the Authenticity Project is that I felt, although it was, that was very authentic. There was nothing inauthentic about that. Maybe what would be inauthentic is that I wasn't a good mom. I feel like I wasn't a good mom to Georgia in those times. I feel very guilty. But whatever. I bought her a brand new car. Surely that's enough. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) What would you write about if you had to write about something? I don't know. I mean, if I had to, the first thing that sort of popped in was along the lines of guilt a little bit, which Mm. is interesting. Um, but it would probably be about the dynamic and the relationship with my mother-in-law and how challenging and how I do feel guilty about how some of that has played out and how I probably could have handled it better and whatnot. That's so funny. That's what I would have guessed for you. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I thought to myself, she would probably write about her mother-in-law and then, yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess. I mean, and I'm not even sure what I would say about it necessarily. Um, I mean, I would definitely do things differently. I'm not sure that that's what this is really asking. No, yeah. And I don't think that's really what it's asking, Mm. but um, maybe if that's what's waiting on me, then maybe it wasn't super authentic at the time. Right. Oh, you know that's I mean? interesting. Yeah. If it's waiting um, on you, you weren't authentic in, at the time whenever whatever's waiting on you right. happened. I don't know, but that's really sort of what comes to me at the moment. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I I think you are an absolute saint. I couldn't. Yeah, that's not true. (laughs) You are. You are. Because it's 
hard to live. We are not culturally brought up to live in multi-generational households. That's not our culture. There are many, many cultures where that's the norm. That's not the norm in the white person in America culture that we grew up in. I mean, hope that wasn't politically incorrect, but that is that is the culture I was brought up in. And I nobody lived with their parents or their parents live with them. That's it's got to it's really hard. So as guilty as you may feel, I think you should forgive yourself (laughs) because it's it's I mean, it's got to be really hard. Yeah, it's just been a long, interesting journey road. You know, there's so many things that I personally would do different. I would change the relationship. Even the one my kids have with her, I think has been challenging because of my role. You know what I mean? Like that is unfair. Interesting. A little bit. Hmm. Um, and your mother-in-law is a lovely person, by the way. She's, she's not a lovely a human. She's, she is. She's still not. around. I make it sound like she's dead. Yeah, I no. was like, <laughs> she's still in your backyard. She's still here. She's, yes, she's in your backyard. Next door. I just saw her the other day. Yes, she's lovely and fine. She's but, lovely, but you know, it's a lot uh, to have someone that you have to care for because she does need a lot of caring for. Yes. She needs a lot of managing and caring for. And I think from my experience with you, always has. So it's not yes. like she's just aged into needing that. Correct. I think yes. she needs a lot of management. Um, which was one of the biggest challenges. Mm. Uh, I was unaware of that going into the situation. Uh-huh. And had I been more aware of that, I think the situation probably would have been very different. Um, I'm not even sure my husband was fully aware yeah. of the level of uh, care in which she needed. And I'm not talking like physical at all in terms of or she's medical, perfectly healthy. Yeah. Like there, we don't have any of those issues, but her inability to manage life is uh, quite stunning, actually, Mm -hmm. Um, and has dramatically affected our family, our marriage, our, like, family dynamic. So Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were very naive going into the situation. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully someone— And here we are. (laughs) Well, well, maybe someone who's listening could go, oh, interesting. Maybe I should assess in a different way, like— no, they don't need a pill every four hours. No, they don't need to be right. driven to physical therapy. No, they don't need. But that's really great perspective. I think if, as I always say in my podcast, to learn is to go, oh, I'm faced with this. Maybe I should ask a different set of questions instead of the ones that are so obvious. It's funny. Um, one of Stephen's uh, cousins, um, who is now 35, has two children. Uh, Her mom was going to move in with them. And she's like, so tell me about it. I was like, I'm going to tell you one thing (laughs) and one thing only. Like the reality is, can, do you really understand who your mom is? And she has a very different relationship with her mom and whatever. Um, But I'm like, you really need to understand who she is Mm -hmm. as a human. Mm -hmm. How does she react to friends? How does she react to new situations? Like all of that kind of stuff. Mm More so than like her bank account or any of that stuff. All of that is pretty cut and dry and you're going to figure yeah, that out. But it's fact-based. It's the other piece. You're mm-hmm. asking this woman who has lived in the house that you grew up in for 35 years to relocate. Mm-hmm. She has just left her job. She's relocating to help you with the baby. How is this going to work? <laughs> yeah. How is this going to work? You know what I mean? Like that's really what you need to understand more so than anything else. The and semantics. what is your expectation for help? Mine was not what I got. (laughs) I think that's true a a lot of the time. I think it is too. I Um, think that we as people overestimate parents and mm in-laws because they were parents and in-laws. But I think as a grandparent and at their age, sometimes it's not what you think. And, And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that other than our expectation. Yeah. Like you were saying earlier. It's funny when you were talking about trying to cook dinner with Isla, there was, you know, Max was in therapy (laughs) when he was little. So my mother-in-law would watch Lily and his therapy ended at 6 p.m. My children, super rigid, had dinner at 5.30 every day. Um, So we would come home and the expectation was that she would have dinner because I can't possibly make it at that point. Kids are starving, whatever. And um, that didn't happen. She couldn't manage watching one 18 month old child and make dinner. And I was like, I, I, I can't even process the fact that you can't manage this. You were a mom. You raised two children. How do you not 
yeah. do this. So you're right. There is this whole level of expectation where you see somebody in a certain way mm-hmm. and then realize, oh, that's not who they really are. Right. So, or are anymore. Or anymore. Yeah. Correct. Anymore I mean, sometimes they were, but aren't anymore. Yeah. You know, I see things in my dad that aren't the same as when I was a child. And I go, and some of it makes me sad. And mm-hmm. some of it I'm happy for, you know, because as we grow and change through life, so have they. And, you know, even stuff with my dad, like silly happy pieces that don't aren't there anymore where I go, oh, that that's a bummer that used to be here. But now we've transitioned to this place over here. Mm -hmm. And I don't really resonate with that in the same way. So I don't have that connection I used to have because this part over on the right is no longer is now moved to the left. Not not making political statements, just saying (laughs) something's shifted around. Um, That's really good advice, I think, to, to say who is this person that's moving in and what what is the expectation you know it is hard to I think with I'm I'm speaking totally out of turn so I hope my in-laws are okay with this but my kids got a different Nana and Papa than Cotty's kids because my Mm -hmm. kids are 17 and 15 her kids are three and one so in you know your early 60s yeah and now they're in their early 70s. That's a huge difference in a grandparent. I mean, the stuff that Gigi could do for me, she's not physically, it's not that she's not physically able, she's in great shape, but yeah. a, a 62-year-old and a 72-year-old are drastically different bodies and psyches and and um, patience and everything. And Gigi's awesome with her grandkids. But I sometimes go, that's a bummer. I wish they had Mm -hmm. the Gigi my kids had just simply because she was younger, faster, you know, on the floor, up and down. And she does that with Teddy. She's in up and down off the floor. But I can tell it takes a lot more effort. Yeah. And so how that must have, I wonder sometimes how Cotty feels about that because Cotty got to witness Uh, Nana with my kids and Papa with my kids and how different it is and how that makes her feel. Maybe she doesn't care or think about it at all, but I wonder because she got to see, you know, young, fast Nana, Papa. And now we still, we have, we have young, slightly slower Nana and Papa. (laughs) We'll still say young, slightly slower, but I don't know. Change is hard, I think. And, um, Managing expectations sometimes is even harder, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My sister and I talked recently about how my relationship with my parents, like obviously every kid's relationship with their parents is slightly different, Mm -hmm. but she lives in my hometown. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister live in our hometown. So when they see my parents, they can have a meal with them and then they go home or they, you know, can just, you know, they can go out shopping. They can just do the things that you do when you live in the same town. But I live thousands of miles away from my parents. So when I see them, I'm either staying with them yeah. or they are staying with me. So we see one another 24 seven for a week or two. And it's just a very different relationship. And both our successes and our challenges are different right? Um, mm-hmm. because of that, because I see my parents when they're exhausted, like when they're done mm-hmm. at the end of the day and they're older and, you know, they're done. <laughs> like their yeah. exhaustion level is different. And my sister doesn't see that because she's, you know, going home with her kids sure. after dinner. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, for better and worse, um, we just got get different parents right now. And that's that really way. interesting. I never that thought about that. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't thought about that. You know, when Al and Gigi come to visit, they stay with Annie. Annie has a two bedroom and they take the second bedroom. So she gets a completely different experience than the other two families because they don't ever stay with us. But I didn't have a spare bedroom and um, Cotty doesn't have a spare bedroom either. So there was only one option really or a hotel. So yeah, Annie gets some 24 seven. And I and not that there's anything wrong with that, but it is yeah. a different experience, very different experience than having a minute to go back to normalcy, even if it's just for half an hour, you know, to not, to just be in your own space for a yeah. minute. Um, how did we get off on this subject? Authenticity <laughs> project. See, it got some good conversation. Anyway, I don't, I don't know if I would 
not recommend this book, but I would, it's definitely not my favorite book. It's an okay beat read. It's an okay beat read. Yes, good one. Yeah. She wrote a memoir first. Mm-hmm. She did. The Sober Diaries. I've not read it. Me neither. Um, but. So maybe that's worth a read. I don't know. Maybe. She was easy to read. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. What are we reading next? You were supposed to bring something, Kath. Oh, oh that's right. Oh. Did you forget? Um, you know what? That's so funny. I actually have a whole, my, I don't have my phone, but my, anyway, I had a list. Um, have you read The Push? Have you read that? Yes. Oh my God. I've seen that book everywhere and I was like, it's guys, on my list. Okay. But... We have to do the push. Okay. okay what's the push? I've read it. And normally I know we usually don't like to do a book that right. one Someone's person has read, read. Yeah. but it is just such a, a discussable book. It's really? one of those books that I finished it and literally was like texting people and saying, have you read the push or, and like, you some, didn't text me and I ask, um, <laughs> I'm in your book club. <laughs> I knew you hadn't read it. I've, I haven't read it. I guess. Do you, so, cause do you know what I read like it for? every list I've seen it in oh. every, like, because I, there's a lot to talk about. There's okay. a lot of things to process and discuss. See, I knew awesome. I okay. It. So the yeah. push, um, you guys, so this is funny. I read it in my other book club. Uh-huh. My other book club Betrayer. is my book club. It's way better. Betrayer. <laughs> no, it's my book club with my mom and my mother-in-law. Oh, that's right. That's oh, right. That's one. right. Oh, that's we so should funny. have a book club with your mom and your mother-in-law. We should read oh, my book God, and funny. Zoom and have us all on Zoom. That right. would be really fun. This is the only book that we ever actually read all together and discussed <laughs> because after that, my mom, well, uh, there were a lot of supply chain issues with getting things uh. to Canada. So she wasn't able to get our next book club pick for a long time. And then I lost interest and I was the organizer of the whole thing and, oh. and it all just sort of fell apart. But, but we did have a very were, good discussion. No, just on one and done. Push. Yeah. You like- <laughs> oh, you had a very good discussion on the push. Okay, yeah. good. Maybe they'd like to join us. <laughs> Although I really do enjoy having you in person. So maybe not, maybe not. Right. Maybe not. I like in person. I'm glad you're back yeah, in person. Yeah. Me too. It was okay. a long haul, huh? Yeah. The Push. Okay, I can't wait to read this book. By Ashley Audrain. By Ashley Audrain. Okay. Awesome. So I had a backup in case you didn't have one. Oh, oh. what's your backup? This is from Lillianne Hayslip. Uh-huh. <laughs> she is There's 13. Okay. Okay, I was gonna say there's a new Ella Ellen Hillenbrand book out that's supposed to be good too. Oh yeah? Yeah. Like the four wins, the four something. Huh. Anyway, okay. Hmm. What's Lily's recommendation? It's called Daisy Jones and the Six. Oh, I read it, loved it. You did? Yeah. Really? <laughs> she told me this is her favorite book. And she asked me if I would please read it because she's dying to discuss it with me. And I was like, Well, if Kathy doesn't have anything, I'll make it a book club book. Um so maybe for next time or something, but she's dying. So how about this for adorable? I am so proud of myself for this adorableness. I just went on a trip, you know, with Sandy and her girls. And um, Sandy is, reads, likes to read, but I, I don't know if I'd call Sandy like a reader. You know, I don't know if she's, she, she definitely likes to read, enjoys to read, but she self-professed, very slow reader. I mean, English is her second language. So it's, she's a slow reader. Her two children are lightning fast. They're like devouring books. I think Kylie maybe read five or six books in the two weeks we were gone. Um, so she wants to talk about classics. And I don't have any kind of extensive knowledge of classics, but I've read a few and I'm talking to her about what to read. And she says, would you mind running a book club just with the girls and just classic books? And I was like, yeah, that would be awesome because a lot of classics I haven't read either. And uh, and she was like, J- just whoever wants to join. So I don't know if your girls want to join this classic book, but our first book is Treasure Island. So I wanted to start with like a middle school level book uh-huh. for the younger girl in the in the group. I don't know how how... Um, I don't think Lou's really read any classics yet. And because Treasure Island was written for like a, a, like a 13-year-old boy, I guess, he wrote it for his stepson. Um, I was like, you know, I read that book aloud. Every year I read a classic novel aloud to my kids every summer, age appropriate, like The Secret Garden, yeah. um, Treasure Island, um, Little Women. I read aloud because 
I wanted to experience the book with them. And and I wanted Isla to experience a classic and she was never going to pick up a classic on her own. <laughs> so I was like, she I want her to I want her to know what people are talking about when they start talking about little women. Um, this was before the movie came out, but whatever. So I said to Lou, of all the classic novels I read to them throughout the years, this book comes back to me from time to time. I think about a character or I think about a scene from this book. No, it's not the best book I've ever read in my life. But you know a book's good when all of a sudden it just drops in your brain from time to time. So I was like, this book is going to be slow for you. It's a middle school age book. You're not going to be super challenged. I know that. So, but let's start there and see if we even like reading classic books and talking about them. So if we read something that's easy to read, then you don't mind talking about it. We don't want to start with like Tolstoy. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, ease into this classic book. And Sandy said, I want to read it too. So she's going to read there. There, I just called them on the way because, um, She's driving by the auto shop. I need to drop my car off. I knew she was going to be in this neighborhood. It's way up, you know, up, up mm-hmm. by you, actually. Yeah. But she's driving by to take me to go to Drop Squad. And I was like, on your way, can you pick me up at, at Galpin? She's like, I'm at the beach today reading Treasure Island. So I can't <laughs> wait to hear what Sandy has to say about Treasure Island, especially. But I don't know if Lily would like to join has our class. Has she ever read it before? Uh-uh. Oh. None of the girls, my girls have had it read to them. Mm-hmm. But... No, the other two. That I'll sounds like her. such ask a great book yeah. club. That's really right. Cute. I think it'd be yeah. cool, Super even if we cute. keep it to simple. Mm-hmm. You know what started it was that Kylie read Jane Eyre, and I was talking to her about Jane Eyre, and she just loved loved it. She was like, "I didn't think I would like." I think she said something like, "I didn't think I'd like classic books, but I love that book." So I was like, "We can definitely come up with some." So when I was in Georgia, we have these. Uh, three cousins. They're my dad's cousins. They lived in Covington. We called them the Kemp cousins from Covington. (laughs) So one of them's name is Laura. She's, I think about 68. And five years ago, she had a stroke, um, which was really unexpected. She had an infection in her aorta and her heart, which caused her to have a stroke. And she had to learn how to speak again, had to learn how to um, walk. But when I had just moved to New York, I was talking to Laura at a family reunion. And I was telling her how embarrassed I felt with a lot of New Yorkers talking about all these classic novels they read growing up. And I hadn't read any of them. A couple of weeks later, she sent me a box full of classic novels with notes. And oh yeah, you told us about yeah, this. Yeah, I love so that. Laura came to the lake with us and spent the weekend. And uh, it was awesome to hang out with her. Um, I was so impressed with my girls because, you know, I knew that she had, um, delay in getting words like her speech is totally fine but sometimes words would just completely like cup would completely escape her and it would take her like uh, cup you know that's how she would have to come up with stuff and I was afraid my kids would get impatient but they never did they were very patient with her but I told her about this classic book club and she went oh I'll send you a list. I'll send you a list of what they should read. She she was a social worker in an orphanage and she was always into books and she was a school teacher also. But um, yeah, she's like, I'll send you a list. I'll send you a list of what you should read. Don't bother with Jane Austen. So flowery. And I was like, that's my favorite book. That's my favorite book. Never mind. So I'm waiting for this list from Laura. I'm gonna have to remind her probably of what we should be reading. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. Anyway, Treasure Island. So I have two book clubs now. <laughs> <laughs> like you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Except they're way ahead of me now. Lou and uh, Sandy have already started reading. I've got to finish Far From the Madden Crowd before I... That's a great book. Have you ever read that I book? I haven't read it. Oh, it's a good book. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Love Triangle. Love Triangle. Nice. Drama. It's pretty good. <laughs> And he re- he's a beautiful writer. I'd never read anything from Thomas Hardy. I'm really enjoying him as a writer. Great. Yeah. What else should we talk about, ladies? <laughs> anything else? <laughs> no? Any self-help books you've been reading lately, <laughs> Kathy? <laughs> I've actually not been reading anything lately. No? no, we I've just been had a lot of stuff going on, so I haven't been reading anything. But my list keeps getting longer and longer. Mm. Um, no, it's kind of a bummer, actually. Yeah. It's summer. I feel like I should be reading more, but I'm really not at the moment. So 
What about you? My husband is into a rewatching Game of Thrones. So he's very much like, come on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go watch? I was like, for the love of God, this is the longest series ever. And we've already seen it, by the way. Yeah. So you're rewatching Game of Thrones. Yeah. Sounds fun though. How is it the second time? It's still just as good. Is it really? Yeah. I've thought about that, but man, it's a commitment. That's a lot of shit. Yeah, last night, actually, I walked in the bedroom and he had it queued up. It was like season five, episode seven. I was like, fuck. Right? (laughs) And we're not close to the end, people. I don't remember how many seasons there are, but like we got a ways to go. Wow. Yeah. It's definitely worth watching again. It's definitely worth it. It's Mm -hmm. fun. Um, I'm definitely not as committed this time. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can start it. I'll be right in. Yeah. Um, Well, you've seen it all. We have seen it all. The entire thing. I don't Mm. like there's 8 million other things to watch on TV, but we're (laughs) rewatching Game of Thrones. (laughs) I don't blame you. I don't have a lot of free time, apparently. That's what we're doing. I don't know what else. I mean, everybody keeps telling me Tad Lasso is really good. Have either of you seen it? I really liked it. You did? Yeah. I haven't seen it. I have no motivation to watch that. I had zero motivation. I am. Jason Sudeikis does is just. I don't know. He must remind me of some guy I knew in high school or something. There's just some energy that he gives off that I just want to wipe that smug smile off his (laughs) face. (laughs) But despite that, despite my preconceived notions and my judgments, (laughs) um, we actually really enjoyed Ted Lasso and I found him enjoyable in it, which was an accomplishment. So I was afraid I wouldn't care about the subject. It's about a football coach that teaches. Yeah. Soccer. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I, my kids were like hard pass. We're not watching a soccer show Yeah, and left the room and Camille would come back and be like, you're still watching that soccer show. <laughs> we were like, yeah, we are. We're enjoying it. Dad's enjoying it. It's just very, very light yeah. and fun and positive. Okay. Just like Game of Thrones. <laughs> just like Game of Thrones. Same, same. Same, same. same as Yellowstone. No one dies except every five minutes in that show. Right. <laughs> same as Game of Thrones. Yeah. No heads are chopped off in Ted Lasso. <laughs> no. My kids keep asking me when they can watch Game of Thrones. And I just think it's no. just a little too much. Oh, you guys, when we went it's on the San Francisco trip with the, the yeah, kids. I bet. I walked in and one of our darling little girls uh-huh. had, uh, I was like, wait a minute. I recognize that music. I walked in and it was like, no, you can't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> like, really? Not. That was fifth grade. Yeah. Yeah. They're 11. Yeah. You have to tell me yeah. later who that was. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure you could figure it out if you had a chance. <laughs> I a bet moment. I could figure it out. Uh, yes. I think I know who it is, but oh <laughs> goodness gracious. It's like, absolutely not. No. And she was sort of defiant. Well, I don't understand why not. And I'm like, I'm not even going to give you a reason. Like right. this is right. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't be on your electronic. That's it. It's a Girl Scout trip. No electronics. Yeah. Where's your yeah, knife? There's a TV Sharpen your knife. In a hotel room. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah. Detail. Um, um, yeah, I'm not watching anything. I'm not watching anything at the moment. I'm watching this remodel that would never end. Uh, that is my house. I am so so constructioned out. I'm ready to be in this house. I'm weary at this point, yeah. and there's not really much I can do except push people. <laughs> Just push and push and push, but I'm ready for it to be done. I'm ready for a little bit of time, free time. Mm. When we're done with this, I've got to put my work clothes back on and go build a closet. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to save, I'm trying to save, I'm not even trying to save money. I'm trying to save my workers for something they can do that I can't do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can build a closet. Like, and I, when I mean build a closet, yeah. I bought like closet furniture kits from Lowe's. I can do that. But I don't really have the know how to put baseboards on or casements. I could do it if I really wanted to figure it out. But but they'll do that in a minute. Two seconds. Right. And I don't and want them to waste. build the closet in a minute. Yeah, in a minute. Yeah. Or a little longer than a minute. Well, but that's a minute he should not be building yeah. a closet. He should be doing the stuff that... Finishing other stuff. It's skilled. So uh, because this is dragged on for so long, I feel like I am coming... I was like, I will install my own interior doorknobs. I can totally install a doorknob. I understand I should be paying you to do it, but I just want the shit done. So you go hang a door 
because I can't hang a door, but I can put the doorknob on the door. So that's been my focus lately is what can I take off their plate? Because clearly this is just dragging on forever. Um, You know, it's like when you move and you have everything and then at the end, it takes you the same amount of time it took you to move all the big stuff to move four drawers in your kitchen. All of a sudden it just slows it near. Yeah standstill it feels like it's not there's actually a lot going on but i'm ready for it to be done i want to move very soon i hope so hopefully we'll see well thank you for reading this book with me ladies Mm -hmm. what's the what's the next one called the push the push oh yeah does someone push someone (laughs) you've got to read it we've got to discuss we'll discuss the the title like a rorschach picture yes it is that's is it exactly really it is. oh that's yeah. hysterical that's what it reminded me yeah. of. oh you know it was so funny um so in the the mother and mother-in-law book club um we were reading it and somebody i think my mother-in-law brought up oh yeah and i just love the cover and i said yeah me too and that you know that purple is so evocative and my mom's like yeah i'm not seeing purple and i'm like do you see it as blue or you know some people see colors yeah. differently and she's like, I'm not seeing the blue. I see the slide. I see the this. And I was like, and I'm looking at it going, I don't see that, but it is a roar shot. And she's like, oh, you see this is a roar shot? And we were going back and forth. And it turns out that my mom has the Canadian edition. Like, so, she have a ah! cover. They, yeah, so they published a totally different, completely. So hers is literally a picture. Oh, of, how funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's a monkey on ground. top of the slide. You're like, what? I know. I was like, my God, my mom's seen all these things that are just right. so. I better like, call my sister. What is right? happening? Go check a mom. <laughs> Checked her meds lately. Something's wrong. That's really funny. That's really funny. <laughs> that is funny. Well, thanks for reading with me again. Always. So maybe if we can't come up with anything, we'll do Daisy Jones and the Six after. Oh, this was a Reese Witherspoon book club. Hmm. As she said, it's really good. Loosely based on Stevie Nicks yeah. and Fleetwood Mac, which I'm a big fan. <laughs> All right. Until next time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>